This is one in a series of videos that explains how to use the program Comprehensive Meta-Analysis. Um, this particular video works with proportions. There are other videos that work with means or correlations. Uh, the series includes videos on each of these topics. This particular one is the first in the series and tells you how to enter data into the program. When you open the program, it offers you the option of working with a tutorial. I'm going to close that. I'm going to come over here and click Insert, Column for Study Names, and the program gives me a column for study names. Then I'm going to say Insert, Column for Effect Size Data. One of the nice things about this program is that it allows you to work with study data in more than 100 different formats. So the first thing we need to do is to tell it which format we want to use. I'm going to click Next. The program presents me with four sets of options. I'm going to pick the top one, click Next. And what I get over here is a list of different types of, um, of studies that look at the uh, relationship between two variables or the impact of treatment on an outcome. They are classified as dichotomous, continuous, correlational, and so on. I'm going to click dichotomous outcomes, and then under that I have options for unmatched groups, matched groups, and various other um, kinds of studies. I'm going to click unmatched groups, prospective studies, and under that I have uh, four or five different ways that the data might be presented. I'm going to click events and sample size in each group, and then I'm going to click finish. When I do that, the program first offers me the option of labeling the two groups. I'm going to call them treated and control. The program offers me the option of labeling the outcomes. For example, I could call this dead and alive. I'm going to leave it as events and non-events and click OK. The program now shows me that I have a column for the treated group for events and for the total n, and I have columns for the control group for events and the total n. I'm going to enter information for the first study. The study name is Saint. The, uh, in the treated group, I have 12 events out of 65 patients, and in the control group, 16 events out of 65 patients. And the next study is Kelly, and in this case, I have 8 events out of 40 patients, and 10 events for the control group out of 40 patients. Immediately, the program uh, computes for me the odds ratio, and then it also computes the log odds ratio, as well as standard error and the variance of the log odds ratio. Um, there are any number of things I could do at this point. If I wanted to double click on any of these numbers, the program will show me exactly how it computed those numbers. So for example, over here, for the log odds ratio, starting with the cells in a two by two table, which is the way that I, I started, where the cells are given as A, B, C, D, and so on. And it shows you the whole formula, and then down at the bottom it actually plugs in these numbers into the formula and shows how it computed the, um, the various statistics. So for example, by plugging in these numbers and applying this formula, we get the log odds ratio as minus 0.3666, which is the number that shows up over here. If I was to do this for the next uh, line, I would again get the same formulas, but this time obviously the numbers would be different, and these are the numbers that we see uh, on the second um, line. Uh, I want to enter information for another four studies, and rather than typing it in directly just to save some time, I'm going to copy it from an Excel spreadsheet. I have this spreadsheet over here where I have the columns laid out in the same format that I had in the um, in CMA. So I have a column for the study names, for the treated group events and total n, for the control group events and total n. I'm going to copy, control C, that data. I'm going to come back here to the program, click over here, control V, I'm going to paste it in. And now I have that information for all of the other studies as well. At this point, it might be a good idea to save my data. So I'm going to click Save, and I'm going to call it binary data. binary data entry, and now it's uh, saved so I can always come back to that. Um, a couple of other things I might want to do. I might want to customize the data that are being displayed over here. By default, the program is showing me the odds ratio in raw units and in log units. You'll notice, by the way, that for the uh, raw units, it does not show me a standard error and variance. 
because those really only make sense when we're dealing with log values. By contrast, for the log values, it does show me the standard error and the variance. I can right click over here, any place in the yellow columns, click Customize, and I see that there are other effect sizes that I can display. So for example, I might want to display the risk ratio and the log risk ratio and the risk difference. I click OK, and now I have all of that data displayed over here. If I wanted to click on the risk ratio, for example, the program would show me the formula that it used to compute the risk ratio, and again, plug in the numbers and show me how all of that is computed. Uh, it shows me the uh, standard error and the variance for the log odds ratio, for the log risk ratio, and for the risk difference, but not for the risk ratio and the odds ratio. Uh, I can come back here and customize it more. If I click over here, uh, I have the option of either showing or hiding the standard error and the variance. So for example, if I wanted to show the variance only, I click that, and this becomes a little bit more compact. Uh, that option obviously only applies to the places where it can be displayed. It's never going to be displayed for the risk ratio or for the odds ratio because those values uh, would be misleading. Let me come back over here, check this again so that we have a more complete display, and we have that. Something else that you might want to do is what if you have a study, maybe if you had these first six, five or six studies that gave you information in the form of a two by two table, but then you have another study that simply gave you the odds ratio and its confidence interval, but did not give you the original two by two data. Well, you can come back over here, click insert column for effect size data. This particular format is located here where it says computed effect size. And then we have the odds ratio and its confidence limits. I click finish. And what the program does is it now creates a column, a set, a set of columns over here where I can enter the odds ratio, the lower and upper limit, and the confidence level. So for example, if the, pro, if the study is called Rothstein, and uh, notice that I do not enter any information in this column called data format. The program is going to do that for me. But let's say that the odds ratio is 1, and the lower limit is 0.5, and the upper limit is 2, and it is the 95% confidence interval. So I typed in 0.95. The program computes for me. It reflects back the odds ratio, the log odds ratio, the standard error, and the variance. And now, if I was to click over here to see the formula that it used to compute that, it would be different than the formula that had been used for the other um, for the other studies. Notice also that uh, when I entered data from a 2 by 2 table, the program was able to compute the odds ratio, risk ratio, and risk difference. However, when I entered data just for the odds ratio, without anything else, the program was only able to compute the odds ratio and log odds ratio. It was not able to compute the risk ratio or the risk difference, so those columns are empty. One issue that sometimes arises is that people will put in an odds ratio, and then they'll put in a confidence interval that are not symmetric. So for example, if um, the odds ratio was 1 and the lower limit is 0.5, then mathematically the upper limit has to be 2.0. Uh, what sometimes happens is that when data are published, they are rounded, and therefore the information is not quite symmetric. So let's say for the sake of argument I typed in there 2.1, the program will compute the variance based on each of these and then take the average. But if I type in something like 2.5, the program is going to recognize that this is uh, too much of a difference to be caused by a simply rounding error and that there probably is an error in the way the data are being entered. In that case, your best bet is to go back and simply check the data and see if you can figure out what the correct values are. However, there are some times when there is, is uh, when it really is rounding error, but simply more rounding error than the program likes to see. So if I type in 2.1, 2.2, let's say 2.1, the program accepts that. 2.2, the program doesn't accept it. You can change the amount of rounding error that the program will allow by coming up to computational options and saying that rather than having a basically a rounding error that allows for up to 10% error, I'm going to allow for up to 20% error, and then the program will accept that. Let's just go back and make it two the way it was supposed to be originally. Um, OK, so that, that's basically how we do uh, data entry. Let's say that the next study is um, actually goes back to a 2 by 2 format and I want to get back to the to this format. Down here at the bottom of the screen, the program 
creates tabs to correspond to these different data formats. So if I click on control, uh, I'm sorry, cohort two by two events, it brings me back to this format and I can enter data for the next study in this format. I can also go back and say insert column four effect size data and add a third, fourth, fifth format and, um, and so on. If I wanted to come back and look at one of the uh, rows that I had previously um, entered a data for, I can simply click on that and the program will open it up. And actually I can right click over here, say show all data entry formats, and the program will display all of them simultaneously. And this is simply going to extend off the right half of the screen. Generally, it's easier to say show only the current data entry format, which is what we're doing over here. When it comes time to run the analysis, if I click run analysis, the program takes that information, sends it over here, and runs the analysis. Uh, the important thing is that for running the analysis, the program is sending over the information that's located in the yellow columns. It does not matter uh, for the purposes of actually performing the meta-analysis whether the data were initially entered using this format or using this format. The only thing that matters is that these yellow columns were computed correctly, which means that we're using, a, in some cases, a different formula for each row as long as that is the correct formula. Once we go to run the analysis, the, it, it, it becomes irrelevant what kind of data were used to, act, to, to enter the, um, what kind of data were initially uh, provided. And you'll notice also, by the way, when we go to run the analysis, by default the program is using the odds ratio, but we can change that and say that we wanted to use the risk ratio, and we'll get the analysis for that. In this example, when we use the risk ratio, uh, we include all the studies between Saint and Day, because the last study over here, Rothstein, we don't have the risk ratio. But if we go back and use the odds ratio, and then we're going to be getting information from all six studies, including um, including Rothstein. Uh, I'm going to um, come back in the uh, next lesson and show you a lot more about how to perform the analysis using a fixed and random effects model, uh, how the weights are assigned, and so on. Uh, before doing that, I want to point out that the data set that we're using over here, let me just get rid of this last study. I'm going to go to Edit, Delete, Row. Um, the data sets that we are using for this are included in uh, the book, uh, Introduction to Meta-Analysis. This is in Chapter 14, where we have this data set, and then we also show how we go ahead with that to compute the, um, the actual meta-analysis. And additionally, there is a chapter in this book that shows how we compute the effect size, uh, how we compute the odds ratio, the risk ratio, and the risk difference, the formulas that are used over there. And, of course, those are the same as the formulas that you can see over here when you click on any of these numbers. Uh, finally, um, let me mention this is just a, uh, a look at the simple uh, parts of data entry. The program will also allow you to enter data for complex uh, data structures. And that includes, for example, a situation where, uh, let's say that a program that a study reports information for, for, for two or more independent subgroups. So for example, we're looking at the impact of treatment on mortality, but the program reports that information separately for males and separately for females. So what you are going to want to do is to have uh, two lines for each study, where the first line is for males and the second line is for females, and within each line we have basically a two-by-two two table. Um, another uh, case of complex data is where each study reports data for more than one outcome. For example, it might report data for mortality and also for uh, the probability of having a stroke. Uh, and there are ways of entering that. You can also enter data for uh, outcomes at more than one time point or you can enter data for a situation where a study uses one control group and multiple um, treatment groups. One more thing before I leave, um, I showed you here how to enter data um, using this, the, these rows. You can actually double click on this and switch to this kind of a format where we have the same information but now it's displayed sort of as a separate page. This might be helpful. For example, if you're working with a sheet that has all of the data for a single study and you want to do this one study at a time, you enter the information up here, and then down here the program shows you all of the effect sizes that are being computed for that. Up at the top we have the formula for each of the effect sizes. 
And one last thing before I go, let's say for the sake of argument that you have your data arranged um, on a coding sheet where rather than having the treated group events and total followed by the control group events and total, you have the treated group events and the control group events and then the treated group total and the control group total. You can simply take this column and move it over here so that your format is now changed. You have the treated and control events followed by the treated and control total. And now if you open up this uh, screen, that is the sequence in which you're going to be entering the information so that it corresponds to your coding sheet and it simply makes the process a little bit easier. Okay, the next um, video in this series shows how to go ahead and compute the uh, meta-analysis, to perform the meta-analysis using the fixed effect or random effect model. I hope you'll take a look at that. There are also are parallel videos to this one uh, showing you how to enter data for means or for correlations. This is Michael Borenstein. Our website is metaanalysis.com. Thank you.